for a given flow net, we can get the following information. The first is total head H, and you can call this total energy or total potential. They all refer, again, refer to the same thing. You can solve for the water pressure at any given point. You can calculate seepage quantities. And here, I use small letter Q to indicate seepage quantity per unit length and capital letter Q to indicate the total seepage quantity for the entire length of the hydraulic structure and also factor of safety against the heavy. So I'm going to use the example two to illustrate how do we get out this uh, information. And so this example two here, this is, um, I'm going to show the flow net on the next slide, but you are given flow net around row of sheep house. And we are given hydraulic conductivity of soil this is an isotropic soil, five times 10 to negative three centimeter per second. That's the hydraulic conductivity. We're given saturated unit weight of the soil. And we're going to determine these four quantities, basically, that correspond to the previous four bullet points. Head at two points A and B, water pressure at A and B, seepage quantity, small Q and capital Q, and also factor of safety against a downstream kiwi. So on the right hand side, this is a picture of that complete flow net around this sheet pile here. So this is the sheet pile. Again, I'm showing just the unit cross section. So this is just a unit width. So first let's determine the total head H at two points. Uh, to determine total heads, we need to define reference datum. And this is, uh, you can pick any point as any level as your reference datum. I'm going to set reference datum at ground surface. Okay. So that's our reference datum. But you can pick upstream or downstream water table. Either way, it's okay. I'm going to use ground surface as reference datum. And then the total head is re with respect to this ground surface. So to calculate the total head at A, so first for this given flow net, so let's first identify a few things here. The total head when water enters the soil, so that at, at upstream, we call H1, 5.6 meters. Since we're putting the reference datum at the ground surface, so the total head is basically the height of water table above ground surface, so that's 5.6. And then downstream water table, H2, is 2.2 meters. So that's the total head at downstream when water exits soil layer. So the total head loss, this is total head loss. It's basically the difference between upstream and downstream water table. And this total head loss is 5.6 minus 2.2, 3.4 meter. So that is the total head loss from upstream to downstream. And then for this given flow net, we can count the number of flow channels, we call an F. And for this simple flow net, we only have three flow channels. So that's one, that's two, three. Okay. So number of flow channels for this flow net is three. And then the, the number of potential drops, we have, this is one delta H. There's another one, delta H, three, four, five, and six. So there are six potential drops. So ND, number of potential drops from upstream to downstream, six. So that's what we can get, we can read from this given flow net. And then this delta H, Since we know the total head loss is H and the number of potential drops from upstream to downstream is ND, we can calculate this delta H. So that's basically the potential drops. So that's 3.4 over six. And this is 0.567 meter. So that's potential drop between two adjacent equal potential lines. So that's the information we get from this given flow net. Now let's calculate the total head at points A and B. 
So for point A, to calculate the total head, we need to know how many potential drops water experiences from upstream to downstream. So when water enters soil at this upstream surface, we know the total energy is H1. So that's 5.6. And when water flows from this point to point A, it experiences one potential drop, which means it losses a delta one delta H to the total energy at A. is the initial energy in water at upstream, which is H1 minus delta H times one. So water experiences one potential drop from upstream to point A. Then we can calculate this total energy at A is 5.6 minus 0.567. So the total energy at A is 5.033 unit is meter. And this is with respect to ground surface. Remember our data is at the ground surface. So that's how you get the total head at point A. Basically count how many potential drops water experiences from upstream to that point. And then same for point B. So for point B, if we count how many potential drops water experiences, so we have one delta H. So let's follow this solid line here. So that's one delta H to one uh, potential line. So that's delta H two, three, four, and five. Water experiences five potential drops to reach point B. That's delta H, delta H, and delta H. So that's five in total. Again, from upstream to point B, water experiences five potential drops, which means it loses five delta H. Well, this is B. So at point B, five potential drops. So that's 5.6 minus 0.567 times five. And this is 2.765 meter. Again, with respect to ground surface. So that's uh, part one, total head at points A and B. And then the second part asks for water pressure U at these two locations. And to calculate this water pressure, we need to use Bernoulli's equation. This is Bernoulli's equation. The total head consists of the pressure head we call U over gamma W plus the elevation head we call Z. And from this expression, the pore pressure U is simply gamma W times H minus Z. And H is the total head, which we just calculated from part one. So that's total head. And Z here is elevation head. So the key really is to get this elevation head Z, and then we can calculate pressure. So if you look at these two points, so first the elevation head capital Z, we can read directly from this graph. And we are given this scale. So we know this represents five meter. You're given this scale, you can basically read this directly from graph. And for point A, this value is seven point Oh, 0.08 unit is meter. So point A is 7.08 meter be below ground surface, which means ZA is negative 7.08. And point B here, again, you read this directly from graph using the given scale here. So point B, this is five. So it's five meter below ground surface. So ZB is negative five. Once you get these two elevation heads by basically reading directly from graph, then you can calculate the water pressure using this expression here. So U at A is gamma water 
that's the union with the water times H A minus Z A. In H A, we just, again, something we just calculate from part A or part one. In Z A is negative 7.08. And if you substitute these numbers, so that's nine, 119 KPA. Then for B, it's the same. This is 9.81 times HB, something we just calculated, which is 2.765. And ZB is negative five, minus negative five is basically positive five. And this is 76.2 kPa. So that's how you can get pore water pressure at these two locations, point A and point B. And then for part three, uh, part three asks for flow quantities. And for flow quantity first, uh, this is that flow element I showed in one of the previous slides. And this delta QI is basically the flow quantity in one flow net. And this equals to K times H over ND, B over L, the ice flow channel. Okay. This is a flow quantity in one flow channel. And this comes directly from Darcy's law. So this is basically from Darcy's law. So that's how you get that expression. Basically it's Darcy's law. K, uh, delta Q equals to KIA. And I is delta H over the length of the flow element LI times A is basically cross-sectional area, which is the width of the flow element B. Okay. So that's how you get this expression here. So that's flow quantity in one flow channel. And then if you have NF flow channels, this Q is the sum of all delta QI. So basically from I equals to one to number of flow channels, that's the total flow quantity in that flow net. So in NF flow nets. Then if you have uh, rectangular flow elements, and this is a case for uh, example two. That's what we are discussing right now. And for this flow net, L over B is not one. So then the total flow quantity, you have to use this expression. So you have to use this, basically, you calculate delta QI for each flow channel and then sum them up to get this total flow quantity. So that's the case of rectangular flow elements. L over B is not one. And just to make it clear, this I here, this is hydraulic gradient. And this subscript I, this is the, the ice flow channel. So that's the flow net with rectangular flow elements. And if you have square flow elements where L over B is one, and this is a case for examples three and four that we're going to talk about. And for this case, then this Q will be simply I from one to an F delta QI. And this is K times H over ND times an F. So that's a case if you have square flow elements where L over B ratio is one. So with these definitions, then let's calculate flow quantities. As I mentioned for example two, this is a case where you have rectangular flow elements. L over B is not one. So you have to use uh, this expression here. So for this uh, example two here, let's first calculate small q. So that's flow quantity per unit length of this structure. And we have three flow channels. And for these three flow channels, we are given the length to width ratio. The first two flow channels are consisting of a square, a rec, a square flow elements, and the last one is a rectangular one. So this delta Q. So delta Q1 and Q2, they are the same. So this is K times H over ND times one, as the L over B is one. And then the third flow channel, delta Q3, is K times H over ND, then times B over L for 
flow channel three. So it's this one here. So this is 0.38 kH over Nd. So that's the flow quantity in channel three. Channel three consists of rectangular elements. So that's why you have this 0.38 in front. It comes from this given ratio here. And then the total flow quantity is the sum of these three. So that's basically 2.38 kH over Nd. And if you substitute the hydraulic conductivity K and then H and Nd are given. So we calculate H and Nd. So this is basically 6.74 times 10 to negative five meter cube per second per meter. So that's the flow quantity small q per unit length of this structure. And then that capital Q, the small q times the total length of this structure, which is uh, 100 meters. This is given in the problem statement. So this is 6.74 times 10 to negative five times 100. So this is L. Then this total flow quantity capital Q is 6.74 times 10 to negative three meter cube per second. And you can convert this to meter cube per day as asked by the problem. So this is 582 meter cube per day. So that's the capital Q. That's the total flow quantity for this entire structure that has a length of 100 meters. So the last part, part four, asks for factor of safety. For factor of safety, we're going to use this definition. So factor of safety, we call FS, is defined as I critical over I exit. In, in this definition, this factor of safety definition, I exit is the maximum exit hydraulic gradient. So this is basically obtained from the flow net at the downstream when water exits soil. And I'm going to show how to do this. And then this I critical is the critical hydraulic gradient. And the definition of this I critical is basically this part here. Is the buoyant unit weight of the soil over the unit weight of water. Okay. So this gamma prime and same as gamma B is a buoyant unit weight. And then for this I exit, so this X, uh, I exit is obtained from flow net. So this is delta H over L exit. And this delta H is capital H over ND times L exit. So this L exit is the length of the flow element at downstream. So this is the uh, critical location so at exit. So this is a definition we're going to use to calculate this factor of safety. And for this given flow net example two here, this is basically that L exit. And this is the critical flow element at the downstream when water exits soil. We're going to read this L directly from graph, again, given the scale of five meters. So you can read this directly from graph, and this is 3.75. Then I exit, capital H over ND, L exit, and this is 0.15. So this is the exit hydraulic gradient at that critical flow element location. So that's where heaving is most likely to happen. And then the definition of this factor of safety in first the critical hydraulic gradient 
And we are given the saturated unit weight of soil for this example. So this is gamma saturated, which is 19.62 over gamma water. So the factor of safety against heaving at downstream FS equals to six. So this example illustrates the use of flow net to obtain total head pore water pressure, flow quantity, and also factor of safety.